Hello, in this lecture, we're going to go through transaction steps with relation to the accounting equation. Last time, we talked about the rules for recording transactions with regard to the accounting equation. This time, we're going to go through a series of steps, a systematic process to think through as we record these transactions. Really important to think through a systematic system of steps because it makes the process faster. We'll be able to memorize how this stuff works quicker, and it also avoids some pitfalls. Like math, this is a type of transaction where it's possible to learn rules that kind of apply sometimes, but they don't apply all the time. And if we learn rules like that, what happens is we have to unlearn those rules. So we really want to avoid <laughs> learning rules that don't apply all the time. If we go through a systematic set of steps, we will then do that. Also note that when we get to debits and credits, we're just going to build on this system of rules as we move from the accounting equation to debits and credits. So remember the rules are that that every transaction is going to have at least account two accounts that will be affected for every transaction and rule two accounting equation must remain in balance at all times with those rules in place let's go through our thought process in terms of the steps we will think through when recording a transaction whenever we have a transaction whether we received cash whether we did work whether we're paying a bill or something like that we're going to ask the question first is cash affected why one cash is going to be affected a lot of the time it's going to be the most affected count so maybe like 75 percent of the time and two it's easy to know whether cash is going up or down whether we're receiving cash or spending cash and three because we work with it so much uh, we're going to get to know cash very quickly once we know what happens to cash then it helps us to understand the other side of the equation so what, no matter what happens, I would ask that question first. Is cash affected? Well, let's deal with cash first. Let's deal with what we know and then move on to what might be a little bit more difficult. If cash is affected, then we're going to say, okay, is cash going up or down? We're going to assume in this case cash is going up. Step two, we're going to say step two, what other account is affected? So if we know that cash is going up on this side, we have to determine what else is happening. For example, let's say that we have a bank loan that's happening. We can say we think that liabilities in that case is going to be the other type of account that will be affected. Next question, step three, uh, determine if the non-cash account is going up or down. So there's two, two accounts that are affected. One's an asset account over here, cash. The other we know is a liability. Now we need to determine if that liability is going up or down. And if we know that cash is going up and it's an asset and the liability is on the other side of the equal sign, that will then indicate to us that it is going up. Then we want to think through the process. We want to say, well, does it make sense that the liability is going up? Well, yeah, we got a loan and the bad thing is going up. We owe the liability, the liability is going up. Then we want to determine uh, the effect on the rest of the equation. We want to see if there's any other accounts that are affected. Normally, there's only two accounts, but it's possible to have more than that account. So most of our accounts that we'll start off with will only have two accounts that will be affected. But two or more is possible as long as the accounting equation is in balance. So in this case, we're going to say the second account, not, no effect on cash. And we're going to say no effect on equity. Therefore, assets went up and liabilities went up. And you might be saying, well, that's all well and good. But what if we go back to step one and we ask the question, is cash affected? And let's say it's not affected. Let's say it's one of those transactions only like 25% of the time that the cash is not one of the accounts that are going to be affected. Then what would we do? I would then ask the question, well, what did we receive? Usually what we're going to receive will be easier for us to know what we're going to do with it. For example, Let's say we got an IOU in this case. We, we did work and got an IOU. That's accounts receivable. That is an asset and we got more of it and similar to cash in that it would go up because we received it in that case. And then we can go through our series of questions. What other account would be affected? In this case, maybe we got the IOU because we did work and we have equity on the other side of the transaction in this case and the income being part of the equity section. Then we have the next uh, question determine if the second account is going up or down and again it might be a little confusing when we think about equity because we got income and expenses are included as well as capital and draws in the equity section but if we know that assets went up then that tells us that the equity section went up we do want to think through it then we want to say well does that make sense we say yeah well income went up that means the equity section as a total will go up as well then we're going to think about determine what effect on the rest of the accounts or are there any other accounts that are affected from this transaction nothing to the assets nothing to liabilities then assets went up equity went up accounting equation remains in balance so here is our series of questions 
we're going to apply this series of questions to actual transactions. Best way to learn is just to go through actual transactions. But you want to ask yourself these questions as you go through these transactions in order to make sure you're not going to fall into any problems and learn some rules that don't always apply. First question, is cash affected? If cash is affected, then we want to determine what other account will be affected other than cash. Then determine if the non-cash account is going up or down. We're going to do that by looking at the cash account and helping us to determine what the other account is doing with regard to the accounting equation. Then we're going to determine if there's any effect on any other account. Normally, there's only going to be two accounts that will be impacted for each transaction when we start off at least. If cash is not affected, I would ask the question of what are we receiving and record that account first and then ask the question of what is the other account that will be affected and then using the account that we know, determine whether the second account is going up or down and then once again look and see if there's any effect on any other account if there happens to be more than two accounts impacted. That's the series of questions I would go through when recording the transactions.